for y'all to sit up here and put y'all mouth on Joshua Giles. I'm telling you right now, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, and y'all wrong. Okay, so what should we do? Ever since 9-11, you've heard this phrase, maybe not as often maybe as we should have heard or should be keeping it fresh in our minds, but this phrase that says, see something, say something, meaning that if you see something that is a potential danger to you or to your neighbors, to someone unsuspecting, alert others. That way they wouldn't be hurt. Well, that's always been the case in the Bible. It's always been the case, according to the Bible, that if you see something that is dangerous or is as contrary to the scriptures, then we are to alert people. Now, before I go into that and go to the scriptures, I want to go to someone who can't, who was sent to me. And I don't know if, if maybe, maybe she had me in mind. I'm not sure uh, because something that she says in this, it, it seems to point to me, but maybe that's the case. Maybe not. I don't know. But I want to uh, introduce you to this lady. I've never heard her before. I've never heard her before, but she is going on a rant against people who have something negative to say about people such as Joshua Giles and people like that. So I want to talk about um, something that is very, very, very important. Please make sure you watch this entire video. If you are subscribed to a Christian drama channel, please unsubscribe to it right now. You might say, well, what is a Christian drama channel? They're the channels that all they do is expose people all the time. Now, I don't know who she's referring to if she's just saying when she says all of the time, all they do. Sometimes people kind of say that kind of tongue in cheek, knowing that you don't do that all the time. You know, that's not all you do. But because of the number that you do it, they'll just, you know, how you say, well, you've never done this. Or you always this, you know, just kind of be more hyperbolic. I don't know if she's trying to be hyperbolic or she's speaking of only those that all they do is just call out. I personally do not agree with a channel that all they do is call out. I'm not saying what proportion, but I think a an actual uh, believer ought to be, if you've got some sort of influence, you ought to be sharing what the gospel is, encouraging people, and also going over sound doctrine. So she may have a point there. She may not be. It depends on how she's speaking it, how she means it. If you have been listening to any of these people, I'm telling you right now to unplug from them in the name of Jesus. I will also be doing this as well, which I wasn't listening to a lot of them, but there's a few brothers and sisters in Christ that every time you watch their content, they're always exposing someone else. I just saw last night one of the most disgusting exposure videos I've ever seen in my life. And there was a pastor on here trying to expose Joshua Giles in his ministry. I don't know. Now, I'm not sure who she's speaking of. The reason why I say I, I don't know if she's speaking about me because once they had their mantle conference, and we're going to talk more about the, this mantle conference later, but once they had their conference, uh, the opening night, the next day I did come out and speak about how bad this is just from the jump. And it was featuring Joshua Giles. I don't know if anyone else did that. There might've been one or two others. So I don't know if she's speaking of me, but it just kind of makes me wonder. We're going to talk about Joshua Giles. This is a man who is without question a false prophet. Well, what is a false prophet, you might ask? A false prophet is someone who gives what? False prophecies. You know, like his prophecies in 2023, January, where he says it's going to be this great wealth transfer. But he said that it would be a sign to us uh, of this transfer that we have been talking about and that we have been uh, prophesying and we've been preaching and we've been saying this. Uh, I've been echoing this for, for the past several years that we're coming into the time of transfer. Yeah, that's a false prophet. Uh, that didn't happen. Or someone who speaks about uh, there's going to be these collapse in these institutions and banking and so forth. That's a, which didn't happen, by the way. And he said there are seven judgments uh, that are coming uh, on uh, the nation, the systems of, of the world. Now, we will see seven different judgments begin to happen simultaneously. Now, now one of those judgments is on the banking institution. And so we're going to see the banking institution shaken and, and it's going to be a severe shaking the shaking because of the corruption that has been there that we were going to see these this major conglomerate that was going to go bankrupt and it would be a sign but he said to me there are seven judgments that are now coming uh on the world systems and one will be seen in the banking institutions and so get ready because you're going to see uh some of those things get a little worse but the lord said to share this again that we're going to see certain major uh companies within the united states and within other nations that are going to begin to uh do these massive layoffs and it's not the ones that we've already 
already seen. But the Lord said, get ready for another wave of massive layoffs. And so we're going to have to depend on the ingenuity of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to depend on the innovation of the Holy Spirit in our time. And this is where faith kicks in. Uh, but diversification is going to be one of those buzzwords. And the Lord said to me, diversify. He said, don't put all uh, of your money and all of your resources in one place. He says, you're going to have to spread it out strategically. You're going to have to make sure uh, that uh, you're only putting uh, what can, can be insured uh, in this particular uh, bank or in this particular location. And you're going to have to begin to spread out uh, your, your money. You're going to have to make sure that it's in uh, multiple different pools uh, so that if there is uh, a, an attack or if there is, uh, it can even be a cyber attack or, or some kind of a collapse in one area, you're going to begin to, uh, you're going to have a plan of stewardship so that you're not. That's a false prophecy or these vague prophecies that he gives that is that doesn't even mean anything about people uh, buying land and things like that. Well, that happens every year. So not only is he a false prophet, he's a vague, sometimes vague, oftentimes vague, false prophet. And it's not even so much the false prophecies as bad as they are. This is someone who God will deal with. But it's also him promoting these other people on this conference, people who are clearly heretics themselves. And so, yeah, Joshua Giles needs to be avoided. I don't know if you guys know who Joshua Giles is, but if you don't, you can look him up. All right. This is a true man of God. And I knew that it wasn't going to be too long before the Christian drama channels began to make uh, videos about him and his ministry and how he chooses to run it. Let My question has always been this. When they said, I've heard a few people say that he's a man of God. Based on what? Based on what metric does, do you say that he's a man of God? Because he he holds a Bible. He We've covered how he twists these scriptures in a God-awful fashion on his first night of his own conference. And that seems to be the main thing that he's after doing these Monday morning or Monday uh, prophecies. He get these prof prophecies every Monday from God for you, good prophecies, and then going from one conference to the next conference to the next conference. That seems to be about what he's about. I'm not sure I don't know a lot about it, but what I've seen, nothing godly or to say that he's a man of God. I haven't seen that. Let me tell y'all something right now. If all of your content is geared towards exposing people, if all of your content is geared towards pointing out what's wrong with others, you are in error. I agree if all your content is that. Now, I've had people say the same thing about the, about me, not realizing that 1,300 videos, about 1,000, 1,100 videos, somewhere in that area, are about teaching, uh, edification, and encouragement. They never see those videos. Why? Because YouTube has figured out, and I don't know you but YouTube knows you better than maybe you know yourself. Because if you keep getting uh, videos where someone is, is, let's say, pointing out the errors of a Joshua Giles, or pointing out the errors of, say, a Juanita Biden, or pointing out the errors of, say, a John Hanna, these people that were there at the conference, pointing out the errors of a Ryan Lestrange, yeah, the, those sort of videos, if you're constantly getting those videos sent to you, it's because YouTube knows you watch those. But if you never see the videos where we're covering sa salvation, where we're covering issues regarding marriage, where we're covering issues regarding Israel, where we're covering end time issues, where we're covering things about how the Bible speaks about the spirit, how to read the Bible, things like that, how to use sound, proper hermeneutics, those sort of things, dealing with uh, maybe election or predestination. How does that work, the order of salvation? You never get those videos. Why? Because you clearly are not interested. How do I know? Because if you were interested, YouTube, who knows you, knows what you what your viewing habits are, would send those videos to you and you would know that. But the reason why many of you folks who love these people don't know that someone's out here actually teaching is because you're not interested in teaching. You're interested in having your ears tickled. The same measure of mercy that you show will be shown back to you. People forget that the scripture still stands that you reap what you sow. When you cut on your camera and you choose to open up your mouth, you better be sure about what you are saying. You better make sure that you have heard from the Lord directly because when you begin to put your mouth on people, I'm telling you right now, there will be a very hard price to pay, all right? We forget that David belonged to the Lord, but even when he sinned, he still had to pay the piper when he made the mistake he made, okay? I said all that to say this. 
unsubscribe from these Christian drama channels, always exposing people, always putting other people's ministries on blast, always pointing out what's going on with other people. Let me tell you something. Most of this stuff is stemming from hurt, rejection, because they didn't got hurt from a previous pastor or a previous relationship. And I'm going to tell you something right now. All the, A lot of this is root, rooted in bitterness, guys. When people over criticize and always critiquing someone else, it's because there is a root of bitterness on the... They seem to be part-time psychologists uh, because they seem to want to try to uh, analyze why someone calls these things out. We're going to go through the scriptures and we're going to see that, first of all, you'll notice she's not using any scriptures, which is the typical norm. Uh, now, there are some bits of truth that she is saying, but when someone calls someone out or asks the church to be aware of this person, are they being biblical? Or are they being unbiblical? Because if you're going to sit there being unbiblical, you should turn these people off. Well, then you would have to say the same thing to Peter, to Paul, to John, to James, to Jude. Oh, yes, and to Jesus. Because every writer, every writer, obviously Jesus wasn't the writer in the New Testament. Every writer in the New Testament calls out false teachings or false teachers. And oftentimes, many times, sometimes by name. That's always been the case, even in the Old Testament. And so what exactly, Miss Brittany is her name, I believe. I think she's in some some Christian speed dating. I think that's what her, her deal is. I'm not sure. Never heard of that. But anyway, what exactly, dear sister, do you want us to do? The inside of them. And I'm telling you right now, guys, y'all are getting ready to witness some things that y'all have never seen before in the body of Christ because people simply just do not know how to sit down and be quiet. For y'all to sit up here and put y'all mouth on Joshua Giles, I'm telling you right now, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, and y'all wrong. And Someone tell me, hurry up, please tell me, or take your time. It doesn't matter. Tell us what, whenever I've said anything about Joshua Dobbs, what exactly was I wrong about? And oh, by the way, don't give your opinion. Bring the scriptures if you don't mind. And not just him, but all the other many sisters and brothers y'all have drugged on y'all Christian drama uh, channels. And y'all think for one second that y'all um, are not going to have to give an account that your words are not going to find you out. The Bible says by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. That goes for all of us. Because let me tell y'all something. What God is not, he's not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. Y'all better go unsubscribe from these people. They sit back and nitpick and tear other people's ministries apart. They judge things before it's time. They don't understand what's going on. And they're creating more and more confusion in the body of Christ. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm telling y'all right now. They are stirring up confusion in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Those channels, don't you know that your influence matters? And what you do with your influence matters. You might say, well, Brittany, why are you yelling? Because I'm telling y'all I am upset. It is a holy anger. Don't care if you're upset, could care less if you're not giving a reason and actual biblical defense. Remember, it is Peter who says that if anyone asks you, always be ready to give a hope of the defense for everyone who asks you of the hope that is in you. And so if someone asks a question about, hey, a particular doctor, something you said, and you don't want to give a defense, what you'd rather do is run behind someone like a Brittany or someone whoever else wants to defend them. Because that's typically what it is. They let someone else come out and defend them who are clearly ignorant of the scriptures. And I do mean this as as intensely as you can take this or hear this. Please hear the spirit uh, that I say this here. Understand the heart that I'm saying this. This woman is ignorant of what because of what she's saying. She wants to defend and let off the hook people who have given false prophecies and bad doctrine. A false prophecy, especially numerous false prophecies, and I just gave you two of Joshua Giles, makes that person clearly a false teacher, I mean, a false prophet. Now, going to, and, and I don't know if she's a King James Version person or New King James, doesn't matter, or if you're ESV and NASB, I'm going to use King James Version on this particular pa passage, because I'm going to ask you a question to that person or anyone else that might be inclined to agree with her. How do you do what Mark, uh, what, Ro what Romans is saying? How do you do this? He says, I beseech you, brethren, to mark them that cause divisions and offenses, how contrary to doctrine, to teaching, which ye have learned and avoid them. How do you avoid someone if you don't know who the, who the person is to avoid? How do you, so should we not mark them? Should we not do what Paul says? Or how do you do this? How do, how do you do, should we, should we avoid or not listen to uh, first Timothy, I'm sorry, Titus 1 9, where it says, holding fast to faithful words which are in accord is in accordance with teaching, so that we will be able to exhort in sound doctrine. And look what he says, 
to refute those who contradict. So are you saying we should not refute those who contradict? Are you saying we should not expose? Well, again, Paul has a different tactic. Paul says, uh, don't participate in these unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. So are you saying that we should not expose them when Jude comes back and says that I would love to talk to you about our common salvation, but I felt it necessary to write you appealing to you to contend earnestly. Should we not contend for the faith? Why? Because certain people have crept in unnoticed. So we shouldn't contend for the faith. Is that what you're saying? You're saying be quiet. What scripture do you point to to tell us to be quiet? Remember, Paul is one also telling us, laying the situation about what we have right now, the, the place where people don't want to adhere to sound doctrine. But what does Paul say? Paul says, preach the word. How often? All the time. Be ready. In season, out of season. Look what he says to do, sweetheart. He says to reprove. So are you saying don't reprove? Are you saying don't rebuke? He, are you Now, maybe you're saying exhort, but you're saying exhort in a, in a positive fashion. You're going to have good things happen to you. All these wonderful things are going to happen. You want us to exhort in that fashion. But if we see that that is false, you don't want someone to exhort someone uh, to move away from these unsound teachings. Paul says, how often do this? With great patience and instruction. The word that's used here is for long suffering in other passages. So all the time and how to do so with teaching. Why? Because you're going to have these conferences where people will not endure sound doctrine, but they will instead want to go to these conferences. Why? Because they have itching ears and they'll find teachers in accordance to their own desires. What will happen? They will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to these myths. But he says, you be sober. Now, if we go down further, Paul is the one. Remember, Paul is the one on his deathbed. He's getting ready to die. His head is getting ready to be taken from his body. And he is the one before he dies, he says to beware of Alexander. Why? Because he's done us much harm. He has opposed the teaching. He has opposed our message. And so we've got someone out here who is opposing the message, who is making up as, as they go. And we're going to talk about this even more so. And you say, leave him alone. Take our mouths off of him. You have another thing coming if you think that someone with the Bible in hand is supposed to be quiet. How about you do us a favor? How about you be quiet? Stick with the Spirit. Stick with the speed dating. Do that. Nothing wrong with that. Do that. But do not come to tell someone that they should stop calling out, exposing, making aware, pointing out, marking, exposing, refuting, reproving and contending. Don't tell us to not do what the Bible has already told us to do simply because it's one of your favorite people, because you don't have a good handle on the scriptures. No, as one of you guys like to say, the devil is a liar. We are going to do what the word does. As a matter of fact, rather than obey men, we are going to obey God. The scriptures say to do those things, and so we shall do it. If you don't appreciate it, that's fine. You clearly don't appreciate the scriptures, because if you do, then you would find it offensive anytime someone would violate those things intentionally and repeatedly and offer these vague prophecies, these false prophecies, and you give a wink and a nod and want people to keep going to that person. You, ma'am, you, sir, whomever you are, are showing yourselves to be antithetical to the scriptures. So I would suggest, unless you've got scriptures, do what she said earlier and you be quiet. Amen.